Over 510,000 American children are in foster care, taken away when their families are in crisis and can't take care of them. More than 10.5 million children will spend some time in foster care. In the U.S., 397,122 children are living without permanent families in the foster care system. Children enter foster care for several reasons. 18.8% physical abuse. 7.9% emotional abuse. 6.2% sexual abuse. And 3.2% caretaker inability. I think I was made to be mom. I've always kind of been motherly to my friends, to my little sisters. Um, so obviously when Tony and I got married, we were super um, excited to start our family. And I, of course, wanted that to be right away. Um, it didn't happen right away. And then um, this past year, in our fifth year of being married, um, we were told by our fertility specialist um, that biological children just probably want to happen for us. That was rough to hear. When someone tells you that heartbreaking of news, uh, you search for ways to find meaning in yourself and uh, your situation. Rather than sit and dwell on, you know, the, the condition God has given me, uh, my wife and I chose to uh, become foster parents because we, we wanted to help out. Uh, we knew that there was a need. Uh, we knew that we had the capabilities. Um, and we knew that at, at that moment in our lives that, you know, our hearts were broken. And, you know, what better way to heal a broken heart than to, you know, help a child. Um, get through a, what, what would have been a terrible situation in their lives um, and, you know, just figure out how to turn a negative into a positive is really how our story just even came to be. Monday morning, I um, called our licensing specialist and said, you know, Tony and I have, have changed our minds. We want to go to the active list. Um, and that was Monday morning and Wednesday afternoon we got a call for our first placement. Um, that was probably one of the most terrifying um, and most exciting moments of my life. Tony was at the firehouse so I had to call him and say, hey, you know, get home. Um, we're getting our first placement. Anything come what may, don't look back, forget yesterday, forget yesterday, it's not where you come from, it's where you belong, nothing I would trade, I wouldn't have it any other way, you're so I started out in foster care when I was around 15 or 16. My dad ended up going to jail and that was why I went because I didn't know my birth mom so she wasn't around so that's why I had to go. Um, that first night I just packed up all my stuff and threw it in this lady's collar and we had to like strap, strap it down because there was so much stuff that I had and uh, we pulled up. Ernie was the one that I met first, and uh, he was just like, hey, how's it going? I'm Ernie. Take your stuff upstairs. We'll talk about it in the morning, because it was like 3 a.m. by the time I got there. And then after that, just went to school like it was a regular day. Didn't really tell anybody for a while, just because it's not something you throw out as like a highlight thing. For a minute, I was embarrassed about it, but I mean, once you live there with people that you can build friendships with, they definitely, they make it a lot easier. You see a lot of kids who have been through physical abuse, a lot of kids that, that have been in terrible situations and uh, have been neglected, uh, some of them beyond repair, and that's a, that's a real gut check. Um, you, you, you get mad. You uh, 
but then but then something happens and, and you decide I'm going to fix that. I'm going to take part in something bigger than myself. You're giving these kids that are in certain situations that you know aren't the best for their situation, I guess you could say. Um, some of them are abandoned, you know, they don't have anywhere to live, where others, you know, maybe their parents have died. Um, you're giving them a second chance or an opportunity to have a normal childhood or, you know, give them a family somewhere to come into where, you know, they do feel loved and they do get the care that they need and they do have people that want to help them and they're not just doing it for the money, they do it because they love helping uh, kids and other people. It has definitely opened my eyes and made me more aware of um, just trying not to be, I guess, so judgmental. Um, just because these people, you know, have have lost their children doesn't necessarily mean they're bad people. Um, they could just be going through a really, really hard time. Um, and God uses people like us to care for those children while they're dealing with that. Um, so then you know the parents can get the help they need and their kids are well taken care of. Um, so it's definitely made me a little more aware of situations like that. Um, I work at the Children's Bureau, um, which is a non-for-profit private agency. Um, I'm a home-based uh, case manager through them, and my role through fostering, I work with uh, foster children and their families when children are removed um, through DCS for abuse or neglect, they look for an alternate placement at the time. DCS is a Department of Children's Services. They get involved with families and children um, when there's been a report of abuse or neglect. Sometimes they have to remove the children from the home, and at that time they need to find alternate placement for them, um, which could be a foster home, residential setting, whatever the need of the child could be at the time. It's very rewarding. The kids um, usually have been through a lot of trauma and things, obviously, with an abuse or neglect um, incident. and the kids are really innocent in, in all of the situations, so they're just looking for people to love them and build relationships with, so it's very rewarding. The way that foster care has helped me as a person is that I definitely look at things differently. Um, you try to see who you can and can't help in certain situations, like I'll, sometimes I'll see a person on the side of the road with one of those signs saying that they need money might throw them an extra dollar or two than what I normally would have. Um, it's definitely made me more caring. Um, I do try to be nice as much as I can. Stay positive with everything, you know, um, with everything that they've done for me. I think it's only right that I give back. And, um, you know, all around it's just made me a better person and I have another family for it. Foster parents are necessary because their kids are getting removed. The reason they're looking for a foster home is because it's a time of need. So their parents can't care for them at that time for whatever reason, and that no one else in their immediate family is able to do so or unwilling to do so. So then you have kids that are just out there looking for a place to go. They need a home. They need a roof over their head. And that's the role that foster parents step in and play until parents are able to get themselves in a, in a position to care for their children once again. And make sure you're doing it for the right reasons with a, with a pure heart and you know a clear vision. So uh, every step of this process has, has gone through God and uh, um, a specific amount of people including friends, family and, and social workers but I can't say enough about my growth in this process based on my relationship with the, the specific people involved in the case. Uh, you know, Tara and, and, and Brittany have, have, have always been there every step of the way, and uh, it's been a blessing to have Children's Bureau to lean on and to confide in. There's such a high need for foster, for foster parents right now. Um, we have more children in the area that need placement than we have foster homes available at this time. So that leaves kids sometimes without a place to go, having to go into like a residential setting or things like that, which isn't necessarily what's needed. I would say that it's very rewarding and that you make a big impact on a child in their time of need when no one else is there to care for them and make sure their needs are met on a daily basis so a kid can just be a kid. And it's very rewarding to be able to see the kids develop and grow 
um, and to know that you're taking care of them at the time that they need it. You have to make sure that, that your, your partner, your spouse, uh, anything like that is, is, is on board 100% because without both of you being 100%, the, the steps don't necessarily matter. Uh, but once we knew that, that both of our hearts were in it and that this was something that we wanted to do, uh, it, it really happened pretty fast. Uh, I think there's a lot that people don't know about fostering. I think that people don't realize how rewarding it is or what high in need it is or the impact that they could make on a child's life just by being there for them at the, the time that they need them the most. I would encourage people to foster because um, these children that you bring into your home as foster children, they need um, support and love and stability more than anything. Um, becoming a foster parent has definitely taught me that the world does not revolve around me. <laughs> um, you see the bigger picture. If I knew somebody that was on the fence about if whether they should foster your kids or not, I would say definitely do it. Um, you're gonna have a lot of kids that's gonna come into your life that they each got their own story, you know, they each got something to give, um, and just the fact that you can help each one of them out in different ways while they're living in your house is a great thing. A lot of these kids have, have, have been through so much in their young lives. <laughs> Um, they're gonna need you at 100%. They're gonna need you on top of your game every day. Um, and, and they're gonna need you of sound mind. Um, so the, the biggest thing I would say is, is, is pray about it. You know, talk to your extended family, um, your friends. Uh, you know, be, being a foster parent is about more than just you, your wife, and, and the children. A lot, a lot of people come into these children's lives uh, that, that potentially could not be there later. Uh, so it's, for me, it's about figuring out the type of people I want to make an impact in that short period of time um, and, and making sure that the experiences are positive. So uh, you have to be fully prepared for the, the, the situation you are, are getting ready to embark in. I say over and over and over again, it is the most terrifying and most rewarding thing I've ever done. Um, it, you know, will Tony and I be heartbroken if the little person we have right now leaves? Absolutely, because he's touched our hearts um, and changed us, but we just know that God has a plan, and if this little person leaves, then we'll know we were just meant to care for him um, right now when he needed it the most.